So let's talk about talent, right? So resources and then governance board at the board level. So maybe, maybe Brian, if I can turn to you to describe, you know, what do you think this talent journey is going to look like uh, with, within life science as, as we see it today, maybe two years from now, maybe five years from now? Well, if I could answer that really well, I think I might be able to get a pay raise. But <laughs> I think I'll tell you where the talent journey is right now in life sciences. And you know, I'll be anxious to hear how AI uh, could impact that. But you know, here in the Boston area, we, uh, you know, following the the COVID, well, during the COVID nineteen outbreak, you know, there's a tremendous amount of capital put into life sciences, and you know, it just kind of coincided with an already, I think, uh, frothy period for for investment in in the region, and as a result, uh, you know, we we really started to experience a talent shortage, a talent war. And, uh, you know, companies kind of looked around and said, oh my God, you know, we don't have enough people to meet the moment. And, you know, I think that the state has really tried to coalesce partners around it. And we've had a lot of meetings about how you, you know, upskill the workforce, how you find the, you know, hidden workforce, how you get uh, workers sort of pre-trained and pre-locked uh, in on life sciences as a career choice, manufacturing as a career choice, biomanufacturing. You know, we're we're we're, we're trying to create a, a framework and an infrastructure on the fly, and it's really hard because when you kind of look when you look at it big picture, you're like, oh, so we're we're basically decades behind a problem that we need to solve in the next two years, and, and I think that you know it's. It's been a, there's been a lot of ready, fire, aim moments. Clearly we have insatiable need for talent in healthcare. We need more healthcare workers and we need more people skilled in the art of making technology. Everything from, you know, basic advanced, basic manufacturing, advanced manufacturing to biomanufacturing. And we just don't have, um, we, we may have the numbers if we can kind of convert as many people as we can, but we have to figure out a way to, to to train people faster, and we need to find ways, especially in manufacturing, to uh, you know make manufacturing uh, easier to learn quicker. Um, I think there are some interesting companies here, but you know if you look go into a lot of uh, basic assembly line manufacturing in med tech, you know that it's a lot of still a lot of paper, still a lot of. Uh, you know, still a lot of trial and error, and you know we still have very high turnover rates, um, r relatively high turnover rates, and we're still an industry that's um, you know med tech's a little farther along. We have a little, you know, I think we have more folks in manufacturing and med tech in Massachusetts than than actually you think. You know, we were recently rated one of the number, I think the number one market for med tech manufacturing. But you know, if we're going to have this bio manufacturing, make it here, build it here. Uh, and, and ship it out. I mean, we, we, we need to be far more aggressive in how we uh, source talent, train talent, and basically turn over every stone and, and figure out how to get more people attracted into this. And then also build the bridge to the next um, generation to come in. Because the problem is, is if you rely on CEOs to tell you when we need to, CEOs, uh, you know, they can't tell the education system, hey, you got to teach biology in second grade, you know, not seventh grade, uh, it, you know, because they're, they're the ones that need the talent now, right? And, and you know, so it's got to be a cooperation between government and industry, and then you have to create incentives so that the curriculum can catch up so they're not training people for jobs that are already gone.